there folks, my name is Peter and on today's video we are unboxing all sorts of stuff that I've been buying recently. So one of my favorite things about having this YouTube channel is that every time I make a video unboxing something or using a tool, somebody will leave a comment and say like, hey, you should try this tool it's better than the one you just used. And being the glutton for punishment that I am, every time somebody recommends a tool, I just can't help myself. So a lot of what we're going to unbox today is user recommended. Now what I'm thinking in the future as the channel continues to grow, perhaps every time somebody recommends a tool and I buy it, maybe we give that person something. Could be a piece of hater folks merchandise, should we ever have some, uh, or something similar. If you all think that would be an interesting idea, be sure to leave a comment. And while you're at it, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. We do unboxings, we build stuff, we have a lot of fun, and I think you'll really enjoy it. For today's unboxing, I'm gonna be using my new Snap-on knife. This thing's super cool. I've been leaving it in my toolbox as of now, but I'm thinking over time it may make its way into my uh, man purse, CRKT blade, beautiful product, and of course we like all things Snap-on. We don't actually have any Snap-on today, but don't you worry. Uh, that April flyer is coming out any day now, and. I'm sure we'll be picking up a few things. So the first couple things that I wanna get into are not things that I bought new, but rather that which I bought used. So around my house, twice a year about, uh, there's a big barn sale and they've got tons of stuff there, a lot of tools, bunch of different uh, tchotchkes and things of that nature. And as I learn more and more about tools, I know I, or at least I have a better sense of what to look for, both from the perspective of like, hey, I would like this stuff in my toolbox, but also like, hey, I really appreciate Made in USA tools. I would like to collect this, so to speak. So I picked up a couple things here. First things first is this Eklund Tool Allen Key Set. Now this is made in USA, and when I inspected it, it looked like every little key here at the end, I don't see any of them as being rounded, uh, which is super nice. Of course, there is some rust on here, but I don't know, these things are, Probably 50 years old if I had to guess. Uh, this was $2, so what I'm thinking is we'll drop this in the ultrasonic cleaner, it'll come out good as new. You know, I'm actually looking, what, what I may do is the Allen key set that I have in my truck, which I've used a handful of times, is the Allen key set that I bought as part of an archery toolkit. I do have a bow and arrow still, but I don't really have room to use it anymore. Uh, so this may wind up in there. The next thing that I found, and here's what's interesting. So if you watch, Doc, last best tool, I reference him in pretty much every video because to be clear, he's about my favorite YouTube channel. Uh, he talks about like, hey, here's how you can uh, recognize a snap-on screwdriver handle because they don't always say snap-on. So I started to look at this screwdriver and to be clear, this is a little bent. So it's definitely not the world's best screwdriver, but I was looking at it and it was in the box full of $1 screwdrivers. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, you know, one, this has a very similar texture to my Snap-on pry bar, that little red one. It's also got the stuff here so that if you put a wrench on it, of course this wrench is way too big, but if you had a wrench that it was this size, you could add some extra torque. And I've really only seen that on the Snap-on screwdrivers, but of course I'm sure other people do it. And I'm looking at it, I don't see the word Snap-on, but I do see very faintly a little, it looks like a, a model number on here. Uh, so I Googled it and it turns out that this is actually a Mac tool screwdriver. So I picked it up because for a dollar, even if it's a little bent and maybe even a little bit rusted, uh, I'm okay with it. It looks like we're looking at like maybe a pH zero here, uh, but the handle is really nice. And who knows, this is something that if I ever go into a Mac tool truck and build a relationship, perhaps I can get something like this warranted. But for now, for a dollar, I don't think you can beat it. Next on our Made in USA used tool journey is this SK Tool wrench. So we've got our box end, we've got our open end. Uh, this is a 15 16th uh, Made in USA. Uh, I don't have any, well, that's not true. I, I guess I have some SK tools. Uh, I picked them up from my grandfather. I took them out of his garage not too long ago. You know, when it comes to wrenches, I, I, my view is like, you can find a lot of wrenches. And I think he actually had a couple more. I didn't find any snap-ons, but uh, if I did, I would have bought them. So I picked this one up. It seemed like it was in really good shape and it was a size that I do not currently have. Uh, now, is it a size that I really need? I don't know. But this was also, I think a dollar or two dollars. So. Why not? Lastly, in our Made in USA used bucket is this coping saw, and this is a great neck. So Made in USA, uh, I've never owned a coping saw, and it just seems like something that could come in handy someday. Uh, and it's in pretty good shape. I mean, the handle still feels pretty good in the hand. There's no major chips taken out of it. Uh, of course, this is a little bit rusted, but we'll knock that off, no problem. As far as the blade, obviously that needs to be replaced, and I don't know what size this is, or frankly, if they even make them in this size, but I'm hoping that they do. Uh, even if they don't, I'm pretty happy with it. And then the last thing that I picked up, this is not like a Made in USA tool product or anything, uh, but I love these things. So these are called cuffs. So you kinda, 
So you undo them like this, right? And you can put your extension cords. Like the other day, I had a big bag of dog food and I just, once we opened it and we poured it into the container, there was still some left that you wanted to cinch together. I think I ended up using a zip tie, but of course, this would have worked a lot better. I bought these in a, what I thought was a, a size about this, uh, but they ended up being much smaller. And I did a YouTube short where I used them to hold my uh, bungee cords. So I love stuff like this. If you can find it cheap, great. On Amazon, they're a little pricey. Uh, this one seems to be of a high quality, which I'm super excited about. Uh, I didn't have anything specific that I wanted to use this for, but Stuff like this never goes to waste. All right, so now let's start to break into our boxes. And oh, by the way, if you're checking out this hat, this was also a recent pickup at a vintage store. I've gotten into NASCAR a lot recently. Uh, I've been watching a ton of YouTube videos and watching every race. So if you have any recommendations uh, or tips and tricks with respect to NASCAR, be sure to leave them down below. Uh, my favorite driver right now is Joey Logano. He's sponsored by Snap-on. Probably a little bit of a coincidence there. Super excited for the upcoming race in Richmond. So looking forward to it. So digging into our first package here from Amazon. This actually has a number of things in it. Now this is for an upcoming project. I'm not gonna dig too deeply into what I'm gonna use this for, but again, subscribe to the channel. This is going to be used on my, uh, my Kawasaki Mule, the UTV, uh, because the battery in those things just does not wanna seem to last. Now right now I have the battery hooked up to a tender because I don't use it during the winter, but I wanna be able to keep it on the tender while it's in the vehicle all summer long. So this kit, which is the battery tender quick disconnect ring terminal, and then we've got an extension cord for this type of uh, connector. I'm not even really sure what it's called. And then this little number is a two pack. So this is the female end, this is the male end, uh, and maybe you can sort of figure out where I'm going with this, but uh, I'm definitely gonna do a video when I take this project on. Right now the battery's still out of the mule, but once I get it all set up, I will uh, take you all along for the ride. I'm hoping this works. This all looks like pretty heavy duty material, so I'm excited about it. The battery tenor itself has been working great. So I'm hoping this will make it just a little bit easier in the summer so that I don't have to hold my breath every time I turn the key because for whatever reason, and I just put a new battery in it, uh, they just don't seem to last. And I don't have any accessories or anything like that, so I'm not sure why that is, but that is my one complaint about the mule. So a bunch of stuff for an upcoming project. Be sure to subscribe to see what it is. Next, we've got another package from Amazon. Let's see what this could be. Ooh, this is exciting. And actually, in order for me to explain what this is used for, let me go get another tool. So the other day I picked up this M12 Milwaukee inflator. I did a YouTube short on it. My front and left tire in my truck was getting low. I really hemmed and hawed in the store about, do I go M18, do I go M12? Chances are I'll end up getting both eventually, but for now, I really wanted the M12 to be the thing that worked because it's so much more portable. Now what I love about this is that it has the Schrader valve built in to the cord here. So you just twist this on to your valve stem. You then type in the PSI that you're looking to get to, you turn it on and then the machine turns off once it arrives at that PSI. What's bad about it is that both as you're screwing it on and screwing it off, you're gonna lose some PSI. So that's where these products come in. Now as usual, our friend Doc over at Last Best Tool did a video about this very recently. Uh, and this is called the Lock and Flate, made in South Africa, believe it or not. Uh, although this one is looks like it's built in West Lebanon, New Hampshire. Uh, but anyway, what this is, is that we're gonna use this to go into our Schrader valve. And then this piece will go on top of this. You click the button, you push it on, right? So you lose very little of any PSI. And then when it's done, you just click it and pull it off. Now, according to Doc and some other reviews that I've read, these things do leak a little bit. So we're gonna do our best, right? We're gonna put some thread tape on this and just try to make sure we get as little leaking as possible. Uh, but like I said, this thing leaks no matter what, insofar as when you, and you, and you unscrew it and when you screw it, uh, you're gonna lose some stuff. So I'm thinking that this will be better. Uh, I'm just not sure it'll be foolproof, but for as expensive as this is, and it's pretty cheap, I'm willing to try it. And of course, I'll have links to all the stuff in the description if you're so inclined. All right, let's get into some of these Home Depot boxes here. All right, so this is the Milwaukee Packout. They call it the plier rack, uh, but I actually have no intention of using it as a plier rack. Instead, I want to use it for safety glasses. So what I'm thinking is if we clip those on there like that, we can have a full row at the bottom and a full row at the top. You can never have too much safety equipment on hand, especially glasses like this. I actually don't have a pair of safety goggles that I actually really like. I find that all of these are just a little bit too small. So of course, Snap-on sells some safety glasses. I'm probably gonna buy a pair of those pretty soon. 
but this is an area in which if you all have any recommendations, I would love to hear it. Now, before I bought the plier rack for pack out, I bought this. And this they call like their keychain holder basically. And I was hoping that maybe I could do safety goggles on here. The problem with this is that the more and more goggles that you put on here, they start to spread each other out, right? So like they kind of sit on top of each other. So like here, you're already losing this fourth holder, right? Which I don't love. What I want to be able to do is have a straight line across. So I've started using this for something else, uh, but that was the catalyst or the desire for this piece of equipment. Let's keep the Home Depot boxes rolling because I think that this is yet another piece of pack out kit. What I'm realizing about pack out for home storage is that there's a handful of items that make a lot of sense and you kind of want doubles. So this is what they call their compact wall basket. I've got another one behind me and it just holds all sorts of stuff. Like the one I have right now, it's got my meat thermometer and gloves and just a bunch of stuff that I use for grilling specifically. Uh, it sits right up high on the pack out wall so it stays out of the way. And I really like it for this sort of thing. As soon as I start putting stuff in cabinets, and I have a bunch of cabinets in this garage, but stuff just starts to get lost. Now, what's bad about this, of course, is that it's open to the air. So if I'm doing a woodworking project, you've got sawdust flying around. It's not great for stuff that is uh, susceptible to picking up a lot of dust. But otherwise, I really like these compact wall baskets. They are, of course, a little pricey, as is all of the Milwaukee pack out stuff. But I've, I've grown to love it. I, uh, I actually spent about an hour the other day reformatting the packout wall. The, the first, one of the first videos I did in the new home, the packout wall over there, which uh, has all my outdoor power tools and stuff like rakes and shovels and what have you, uh, because I wanted my, uh, my new M12 inflator on that wall because it's more of an outdoor item. This wall is more for in the garage tools and things like that. So. You can never have too many of these wall baskets. Eventually I will run out of room, but I actually have more pack out plates, so we may have to expand. And let's finish up the Home Depot with the item that I'm actually most excited about because as soon as I get done filming this video, I'm gonna put this thing to use. So this is the Milwaukee M12 die grinder. And it's actually funny because on the website, no, I don't need any more M12 batteries, but the Tool by itself on the website, I think was about 250 or maybe it was 200, but for some reason, the tool plus the battery was $50 less than just the tool by itself. So I don't know if that was a mistake or what, but I jumped on it. Now, of course, I have some tools laying out in the front here, and I, I did that because some of what I bought today is gonna serve as a replacement for some of this stuff. Now, this in and of itself is not gonna replace the Dremel. But I've been doing a lot of tool, quote unquote, restoration videos lately. Uh, and you know, some people give me grief for using the term restoration, uh, whatever. I enjoy spending time in the garage, sanding things down, bringing stuff back to life. One of my most recent projects in that arena was this official crescent wrench. So this is actually made in Jamestown, New York, uh, which is just a couple hours west of here. I don't know how well you can see it, but of course we're getting a nice shine here on the end. I mean, I spent hours sanding this thing. And of course the process that I typically follow is I'll throw it in the rust remover, I'll throw it in the ultrasonic if I need to, then I'll take a wire wheel to it, and in this case I did some sanding, some polishing, what have you. Now, the wire wheel is still really good for certain projects. For example, on this tool, the thumb screw, it would have been really hard to get anything but a small wire wheel in there. But the thing that stinks about the wire wheels, whether they're the small ones like on this Dremel or the big ones like I have on the bench grinder, is that these little shreds of metal fly everywhere, right? They get stuck in your clothes. If you don't have your safety goggles on, they're gonna get stuck in your eye. Uh, so you definitely have to wear your PPE when you're working with stuff like this. But right now it's my only mechanism with which to knock off rust and to sort of clean things. And that was the main catalyst for wanting to pick up this machine. You can buy many attachments, Spoiler alert, I have a couple in these bags over here for knocking off rust, right? scotch bright pads, all sorts of stuff, paint, right? Uh, this tool is great for that. It's got four speeds, came with the battery, it's pretty cheap. So let's open up these pads and see how it works. Now I actually went a little bit overboard with the pads because on Home Depot's website, they sold this uh, pack from Mib, my bro, mid bro. Uh, and this has basically one of every different kind of attachment. But I felt pretty confident that all I really needed was the, uh, basically the scotch Bright pads. So in this package, that's exactly what I bought. 
on Amazon, they sell, uh, I think this is maybe a 50 pack of basically the fine, extra fine, coarse scotch Brite pads. So while we're here, let's open this up. The kit comes with two wrenches. Looks like a half inch and an 11 16th. So you've got your safety trigger here, right? So you can't depress this thing. Like if you have it in a tool bag or something like that, it's not gonna, it's not gonna depress accidentally. But as soon as you flip this up and you push it back, you're in business. And then on the back here, it's got your four speed settings. You've got 10,000 RPM, 15, 20,000, 24,500. Uh, to be clear, I don't know which one I should be using for the Scotch-Brite paint removal stuff, but we'll just trial and error and see what happens. Get our safety goggles on. I wasn't necessarily planning to make use of this during the unboxing, but I guess we'll try it. So maybe we'll start at 15,000. So this is just a piece of the vise, and you can see some of the green paint is still on there. Guess what, that works better than anything I've ever used. Uh, wow, that is extremely satisfying to make use of. I will finish this project, try to post it as a YouTube short, so if you're interested, be sure to check that out. Uh, but, pretty happy with this. All right, and then the last unboxing for today. So like I was saying, uh, a lot of the stuff is user recommended. Uh, these two items, definitely user recommended. I don't know what video it was, and I said, you know, my favorite pair of scissors is actually this Milwaukee set. Uh, I don't know where I got these, but I mean, probably Home Depot. I just don't remember when I got them. Uh, and they have been fantastic. But when I mentioned that on a video, somebody commented and said, you should check out these Kai 7000 scissors. Apparently, these are the best scissors money can buy. Now, when I was first recommended these, the price was, I think like $85. So I put them on my Amazon wish list and I said, I will come back to these at some point in the future. The other day, the price was 50 bucks, which to be clear, still a lot of money for a pair of scissors, but I figured I would try them. They also come in this beautiful plastic sheath. So let's open these up and see what all the fuss is about. So first things first, these are made in Japan, high carbon stainless steel. I'll tell you what, they sure do look like they could cut something pretty mean. I guess we'll try it on this clamshell packaging. Of course, there's a lot more that these things could cut through, but this is all I have handy. Seems like I made pretty quick work of it. How do the Milwaukee's do? Try this again. Guess what? They cut through this a little bit better than the Milwaukee's. They're also a little bit nicer in the hand. The Milwaukee's, you really have to work to open and close them. Uh, whereas with these, you don't have to apply the same pressure. Uh, and of course you get presumably a little bit more leverage, right? Just because they're so much bigger. So you can sort of see the side by side comparison there. So I don't know. I don't remember why the person recommended these other than, hey, these are the best scissors money can buy. Uh, I believe you. And uh, now I have a pair myself. So there's our M12 battery that we basically got for free because like I said, it was $50 less just to buy this. So thank you to whoever recommended that I pick up these scissors. They are seemingly very sharp. Uh, again, I really appreciate how much easier they are to work with as I'm going side by side. These require just a little bit more in the hand than these do, so. KAI 7300, I'll have a link in the description below if you're interested, very high quality scissor. And then the last item in our unboxing today, I actually cannot get over how small this is. So in my most recent video, in which, I don't know if you can, eh, you can't really see it, I did the lighting underneath my Husky workbench. Fantastic project, uh, check it out if you haven't already. I really, really enjoyed uh, both the result as well as the filming. Now in that video, I was using my bench soldering iron. I have another example of a soldering iron here. This is again the first snap-on tool that I ever purchased. I still very much recommend this because it's not just a soldering iron, it's a heat gun, it's a plastic welder, it's a hot knife, so on and so forth. But in a comment on that video, somebody recommended that I check out this Pine 64 
This is called the Pintel. Pintel. Little baby soldering iron. On the website, it said that this thing was pretty small, but this is even smaller than I thought it was gonna be. So the little case that it comes in, first things first, I wish this had a nicer case. When I saw the picture of this, I assumed that this was like a sort of permanent case. And I guess in some ways it is, right? It's sort of like the uh, the Kaizen foam or whatever uh, that you could store tools in. So you, you could certainly use it like this, but at this point, you're probably gonna wanna keep this box around so that it always stays in one place. Uh, but this is a two piece system. So here's the handle and then here's the business end i guess it just kind of sticks in there like that uh wow this thing is actually super cool i would say that this is a similar form factor to like a bigger pen like maybe if you have a mont blanc or something like that uh but definitely pretty small now i think you can power this in one of two ways i'm actually have to go to the instructions because i don't really know so i guess from a power perspective you can both plug in USB C, as well as just your regular old I guess DC power plug. Um, and then the output power is dependent upon the input, which of course makes a lot of sense. But they give you a nice little chart in the guide here telling you if you want this much power out, this is how much power you have to put in. It's got two buttons for plus and minus in the temperature. This is actually running, what do they say here? This is running Iron OS firmware. Uh, which means, theoretically, you may have to upgrade this thing from time to time if there are bugs or maybe just new features. But pretty simple. And again, the way that this feels in the hand, if I were to compare this to, like, this thing, right? Massive difference. And even just, like, the benchtop soldering iron that I use, uh, that's also much thicker. And when you're dealing with, like, the smaller LED wire strips that I was dealing with, much bulkier. So I really appreciate having this in the kit. Wasn't that expensive, I wanna say it's about 40 bucks. And I'm looking forward to putting it to use in a future video. So thank you all so much for watching. I love unboxing stuff alongside everyone. One, because I learn stuff, people leave comments and they recommend new products. Uh, and two, because it feels like Christmas. Every time I get to come and unbox stuff and talk with you all about what I purchased and how I'm planning to make use of it, uh, I just think it helps keep the channel going. So be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you all on the very next video.